We're going to read again two scriptures, Ephesians and Colossians. So if you have your Bibles, please turn to Ephesians chapter uh, 6. ready. Ephesians 6, first four verses. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And, and ye fathers, fathers, provoke, provoke not your children, children to wrath, but bring, but bring them, them up in the, the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Lord. Amen. All right, turn to the book of Colossians chapter 3, please. And there's two verses there. We're going to read verses 20 and 21. Verse 20, I'll read if we will read 21 together. Okay, I hear pages, so I'll just wait and make sure that everybody's <laughs> prepared. All right, verse 20. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, Fathers provoke not your, your children, children to anger, anger lest they be discouraged. discouraged. Amen. Father, thank you for the word of God. It's already blessed. Yes. We thank you for the privilege of being able to share the word. And now, Lord God, the word of God says, the entrance of thy word giveth light. As the word comes forth, let it illuminate our hearts, O oh God, and expose those things that need to be changed. Change us by your power. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I want to thank the Lord for the testimony there. Uh, I want to ask, did you know she had that testimony? Uh, <laughs> That was wonderful. Very good. Amen. <laughs> Thank the Lord. God is so good. All right. Well, we have been, we've been on the theme, you know, for a while. And since we are on TV, we do have to continue until the Lord uh, changes that theme. And, um, People are hearing, someone came to me and expressed that they don't necessarily look at, or they hadn't been looking at it, but for some reason they found the uh, station and broadcast at the right time and heard some things that was really important for them. God took them back to their fathers or grandfather, one of those things, but we just never know what God does. You know, he is so unlimited in what he does. So we are thankful to the Lord for your being here. There are those that are out today, couldn't be here today, but you are here. And uh, so we are thankful. Let's see here. Fathers, uh, we purposely, by the grace of God, begin to talk about the various types of fathers. And I think we did list seven. And uh, several of those fathers, the part of the idea is to help the fathers that are existing, young and old, to um, become aware of uh, more of what God expects out of them. And... Uh, for the fathers to be, to help them to have an idea as to what the father's role is all about. And then with hopes that it'll help society. We're in a society where there's a lot of uh, uh, re rejection and abandonment from fathers and some mothers too. But... Um, 
God in his wisdom, this is one way that uh, he can, in a small way, help people and expose the things that is bringing about a snare on the earth. So we pray that it will be a blessing to many by way of Facebook, television, and the like, YouTube, wherever the word find hearts. God's intent is to heal and to change us. That's his design, so I'm grateful for that. Uh, won't keep you too long, but uh, the scriptures here, the same scripture that we read was in Ephesians 6 and in Colossians. We did read also in Malachi that God's purpose and plan was to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and uh, the children's heart to the fathers and uh, before that notable day of the Lord. Something needed to take place. And uh, sometime, some years ago, I read U.S. News and World Report. They've changed over and somebody else bought them out since then. But at the time, I was, I think I did something on the fathers some years ago. And then uh, the statistics were sharing about 69% of Christian marriages many times um, ended up in separation or divorce. And I thought, wow, Christian marriage. They're supposed to have the answer, you know. But so you see that it happens to them as well as the non-Christian. But thank God for our second chance. Isn't that right? God is so faithful. We honor him today. And uh, we talked about fathers that abuse the children, fathers that abuse the children's mothers, fathers that abandon their children. And... Uh, Fathers that um, break their promises or don't keep their promises. So somewhere midstream, we began to make sure that we were emphasizing the right thing, the children and the condition of the children, anger. Uh, so we put, began to put less emphasis on the fathers and their doings and put more emphasis on the children and the effects of anger in their lives and the desire that God has to, to forgive and heal. This is what will make a better society, not to uh, speak evil of anything because God, uh, it is God's love. The Bible says he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So you see the nature of God. He's it's restor restorative. God is a God that restores and redeems. That's his design. So in these messages, the same intent is not to point out somebody's failure, but is to restore and bring healing and restoration. And uh, I pray that that will be the case here. Fathers that neglect or don't provide for the family. Fathers that neglect or don't provide for the family. has an effect on the children, the spouses as well. And as I was looking a little bit online and um, trying to gather a little more information from what those people that have done research and studies have found, in addition to what God has given us already, of what he's saying, to combine it all together with prayerful uh, hope that it will serve the purpose that God has intended for it to be. Um, one of the websites uh, identified uh, children, I mean fathers that, or parents that neglect uh, their children as uninvolved parents. And it says uninvolved parents do not respond well to the needs of their children and provide little affection, support, or love. They also make very few demands on their children. They easily set rule, they um, rarely set rules and do not offer guidance or expectation for the behavior. And um, so when that happens, of course, you know, there are uh, consequences when children are left unchecked and not 
uh, paid attention to, nurtured, loved, and, uh, provided for, and protected, and um, trained, educated. When those things are neglected, then there are consequences. There, there, there are effects on a child's life. Some are able to pull through in a more decent manner, and some are not. Some struggle all of their lives, and sometimes they have a general idea as to the why they struggle, but, uh, and then some, they are not aware of the buried pain or unforgiveness that they live with each day. But Jesus Christ, who loves us so much, who cares so much for humanity, who died for humanity, that humanity might have that life. He takes his time and began to line upon line uh, expose the unfruitful works of darkness and to offer his healing love. He's a great God. And so that's what he does here. Uh, there are common patterns of this neglect in children or patterns of these types of parents or fathers. They act emotionally distant from their children. They're unable to provide emotional support the child or children need sometimes because they feel overwhelmed with their own needs. Sometimes there's substance abuse in the lives of parents and they, for whatever reason, otherwise, just not able to uh, be the parent that they should. There's limit, limit uh, reaction, interactions with the children because uh, I mentioned they were too overwhelmed by their own problems. They provide a little or no supervision. They set few or no exceptions, expectations, I'm sorry, or demands for the behavior. They show little warmth, love, affection toward their children. And so children, sometimes the, the behavior, they may skip school, or the parents, I'm sorry, I'm still on the parents. They may skip uh, uh, school events and parents, teachers, conferences, and, uh, you know, th that, that's what they found. And uh, I remember my, my dad went to a basketball game that I was playing, and he was always busy and never really had well, he really didn't take that interest. And, uh, you know, he was a farmer, lived on the farm, and that was just not one of those things that he could relate to. You know, he, he says it like this, running up and down the court behind a ball. And so, <laughs> but one particular instance, we had, we played our arch rivals. And uh, when I got back home, he told me that he had gone to the ball game. I was floored. I was so floored because, you know, I always took him serious as he's a serious father. He, and uh, I didn't naturally didn't think he had that time. But it meant so much to me personally. And so I couldn't imagine what it meant to the sons and daughters when they have activities and the fathers and mothers always take time to be a part of it, it's pretty awesome, you know. And uh, but um, my father was not a neglectful father. They mentioned uh, a person that works, find himself working most of the time, and jobs kind of keeps them occupied. And but yet, when they have time, they take full advantage of the little time they have to invest or spend time with their children. They're not classified as neglectful parents. And uh, there's also another type parent that they mentioned, um, free-range parents, that's what they mentioned. And they say free-range parents are those that they nurture and they love their children, but they give them a lot of liberty, a lot of freedom, trusting that they will find or derive at the proper 
consequences for their actions and that they would not necessarily be the same as neglectful parents. There are consequences for that too, but they're still not labeled as the same. But the, the, the ones that neglect are those that are most of the time just too overwhelmed and either had that happen to them in their childhood and uh, but uh, that's not always the case. Let me make that clear because uh, some of the finest parents that I've ever met have had difficult past experiences. So there are exceptions to these rules, right? God is faithful because when a child or a person meets Christ, he begins teaching them and instructing them in that which is right in his sight. And uh, so they can overcome all of these ills because of him. And I, I am grateful for that. So I, I want to make that clear when we're just given in information about the father. Um, but the father's role is important. The father's role is so important because God has made the father the head, the overseer, the visionary, the priest, and all of these things. The guide, the provider, the protector, the mentor. And so the father plays a very heavy role in the child's life. There are times when the father uh, may die prematurely and uh, he does not. Uh, the children don't have that blessedness of having the father fulfill that role. That also creates a void. But uh, the fathers that have that opportunity, but they were never taught that. They never had it in their own lives. And so they found themselves repeating such patterns because that was the image. That was all they really knew. That was what they were more familiar with. Because if I say, but God makes all the difference in the world. And I want to make sure I continually emphasize that because God makes the changes and the difference in any life, no matter what their backgrounds are. But the, uh, the part of the idea is even in Hampton Road, Tidewater, and uh, YouTube, uh, Internet, Facebook, wherever, uh, this message is going for that fathers everywhere that hear it if they find themselves coming up very short in these areas, that they will say, Lord, I see myself. Lord, help me to come up to standard and do differently. And then if just a measure of that is taking place, then a segment of society is going to be better. That's God's design. God, God has big vision. When it comes to bringing wholeness to humanity, he looks at a society, he looks uh, at an institution, he looks at a family, he looks at a city, he looks at a state, he looks at a nation, he looks at nations. God has big visions and, and he looks and sees what needs are and then he looks for those that will listen to him, get the insight or information from him and share it with others by the Spirit. And then God, in turn, gets involved to bring the necessary healing or deliverance that's necessary or breaking of the chains because that's the business that he's in. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we are thankful to the Lord for that. So fathers, they are important. And uh, God wants to heal fathers everywhere that needs that healing. I have received quite a bit of healing. And I open my heart for more of whatever he wants to do. And the second thing I want to talk about, not only the importance of fathers, but the, the children of the fathers. The children, the idea is for the children to recognize the root of certain behaviors or strongholds 
And once they recognized it and began to understand some of the things that literally will hinder their entire life from the fruitfulness that God talks about in his word, if they are unaware and if, his, if there are issues in the heart of unforgiveness and that they were not necessarily aware of and it's exposed and they turn to the Lord, allowing God to heal them, then it begins to change them and God began to give them more foresight and insight, a, a new perspective, a new view, an outlook on life and a new relationships, a new love, just a, a host of things that will take place when people are healed. I remember when I got healed, you know, certain things that I was not able to do. I just didn't have the strength to do. I wanted to deep inside, but I couldn't do it. Something was there. There was a rooted fear. But I remember in the 80s, God visited me, and he broke that thing. He broke that thing. Prior to that, I remember in school trying to, they would have, you know how they have the kids in school to stand before the class and do a report? That was terrifying to me. Just lack of sense of worth and confidence. Grew up in a big family. But when God saved me, I'm giving the glory to him. When he saved me and when he began to heal me in these broken places and breaking off curses that attached themselves to my life, things begin to change and in 1987 uh, poverty was just has latched on to me poverty spirits and, and I didn't know I didn't know what was holding me back I was trying to stand on the word trying to trying to do what I was taught and looked like nothing was working but I remember when God broke that thing 1987 1888 and 89 in that area God said, I want, wanted you to understand the holes that spirits can have to a person's life. They can keep them in bondage and keep them from the will of God for all their lifetime. Even as Christians, if they never come into that understanding of the curses that needs to be broken in their lives and the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Somebody say freedom. freedom. Hallelujah. Everybody loves freedom. I don't know of anybody that do not love freedom. The gospel is about freedom. Setting the captives free. God is a God of freedom, so that's the ultimate goal that he has in mind when he wants to heal the children. So the children ought to recognize the root of this anger, know the consequences of this anger, and the list is long of consequences or the effects of anger over a long period of time. I've watched people die. They wouldn't give up anger. I've watched them die. They wouldn't give up unforgiveness. It is a sad commentary. It is real. It is real. I stood at the bedside. Many of you have heard it. Of a lady, my former wife and I was praying for. Trying to pray. Praying so hard. And the Lord just stopped me. He said, I can't do nothing. And I was... Lord, I said, God, what do you mean you can't do nothing? He said, they won't forgive. I can't do anything. And so I began to talk to the father or the parent there, the husband, and carefully pleading with him to what I heard. And he, he got downright indignant. said, we know, 
We, we, we serve the Lord. We know. In other words, you don't have to need to be telling me about what she's like. And in a few weeks, she was gone. Look at somebody say, it's real. So God wants to free us up. God's a good God. He's not a mean God, isn't it right? He's a great God. For, for the, so for the children of the fathers that found themselves or find ourselves angry, to recognize the root of this anger, understand the long-term and short-term consequences of this anger, and to forgive and be healed. That's the goal. Healing is so beautiful. Healing is so wonderful. You heard the testimony this morning. It's good. It's so good. The third thing I want to briefly mention is the benefits of forgiveness. Prolonged life. The Bible talks about that in Proverbs 3, 4, and 5. Prolonged life. When we follow his word. Isn't that right? Keep his word. He said... Length of days and long life and peace will they will they add, right? Will they add to a life? So it sounds like there it is. There's a, there's a, a projection. There's a uh, an appointed time. God says, "Man's days shall be three scores and ten. It's been reduced down to that, right? But if we follow His word, the Bible says. Length of days and long life shall they add. They guess what they'll add. Add to your life. And so there are benefits in not only the prolonged life, but better health. Better health. I've had a slight taste of some illness. I don't have it anymore, but I'd rather have health. Health is better. To be able to lay down at night and not have pain. To get up in the morning and not have pain. To walk about, to be able to walk and do things on my own without the assistance of others. Health is better. Isn't that right? Okay, so um, benefits of forgiveness, better health, peace, freedom, success, healing from and this is one that I'll put a little emphasis on before we close this one healing from loneliness loneliness restoration better relationships all of these are in the package of forgiveness all of these are in the package of forgiveness it is so good to forgive. It is so good to forgive. So God wants us to be the recipients of his blessings. And then um, we did mention some negative effects that can have on a person that is angered with their fathers, or primarily fathers. And the Lord says in a marriage there can be a fear of submitting to the husband when the fathers have been bad or whatever. There can be issues of control. There can be anxieties, low self-esteem or low self-worth, distorted or twisted images of God. Then there are problems in relationship, trust issues, health problem, unhealthy thought patterns, abuse, repeated abuse, cycles that can follow a person that they uh, experience when they were young but all of this can be avoided when a person comes to God because the Bible says if any man be in Christ he is what old things are passed away and behold, all things have become new, and all things are of God who has brought us back or reconciled us. So now we're no longer recipients of curses, but blessings. 
And so as we, the more we grow in the knowledge of God, the more we can begin to appropriate the faith or the blessings that are ours already, right? Yes, if, if, if I knew I had a million dollars in the bank, I certainly wouldn't walk around here hungry, isn't that right? But if I didn't know I had a million dollars in the bank and I found myself lacking, then I could suffer the same as someone that was poor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The grace and peace comes through the knowledge of God. God has already given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of God and of his son, Jesus. So the more I get in this word, the more I find practice yieldedness and obedience to the spirit, the more I do that, the more I learn just how this kingdom works by standing and speaking in faith, right? That's another whole ram. I must stand. I must speak. I must learn warfare, right? All of these things because there's an enemy that will not let you have what's yours just on general principles without a fight, right? I ran into someone that says, oh, I don't, I don't want to be fighting. I'm tired of fighting. I said, my brother, sister, listen, you cannot escape that. It's a part of your calling. Isn't that right? That's a big reason why there's access to heaven's courts, right? Where there's access to the throne of God. We can go boldly, confidently to the throne of God that we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. I don't know about you, but I find myself having needs all the time. So I have to go before the throne of God every day. Every day I need some of that new mercy. Every day I need some of that grace. Hallelujah. Yesterday's grace won't work for today. Isn't that right? It's gone. So I got to find the grace for the day. New mercies every day. They are so available to everyone that take advantage of it. I heard the Bible says he is rich. And if God is rich and he's full of mercy and compassion, if he is love, if he desires to help us, if he came that we might have the abundance of life, if he says you have not because you ask not, I need to ask. There's mercies for me. There is mercies for you today. God that does not want you to struggle in life and just barely make it. God has something for you and I. God has more for you and I. Just like he said, hallelujah. And God's going to fight the battles of somebody, hallelujah, that been fighting so long their own selves. So, well, this is a new day and the word has been released in the midst of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. New mercies. New mercies. God, hallelujah. Somebody's got to the point where they couldn't do no more, but God says, never fear. I got your back. I got your back. I heard your I pitied your groan. I looked beyond your fault. I saw your need. I heard him say, call upon me in a day of trouble and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not. Um, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full of David says, God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in a time of need. And David further says, in a time of trouble, he will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He'll set my feet upon a rock and establish my going. 
And then he turned around and told somebody, he said, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he'll strengthen your heart. And I want to say to you, somebody in this congregation has waited on the Lord. And hallelujah. And God says in Isaiah, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they'll walk and not faint. This is your time. This is your season. Hallelujah. That you're not going to uh, try to keep up with the footmen, but you're going to be able to keep up with the horsemen. Hallelujah. This is your season. This is the appointed time. For God has kept us. Hallelujah. He kept us in the incubator of time um, until the release of his power, until the release of his glory. This is the time where God is going to release upon you the glory and the power and the anointing to loose the bands of wickedness, um, to set the captives free, to undo the heavy burdens, um, to let the oppressed go free. God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in a time of need. Hallelujah. The songwriter said he looked beyond my fault and saw my need. I need God. I need redemption. I need a boost that come from God. I need God to intervene on my behalf. And God said this is your time. This is the season. Arise and shine. Hallelujah for the glory of the Lord is upon you. Hallelujah. Your light has come. Your light has come. Your time has come. Your season has come. Your hour has come. And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, he has made everything beautiful in his time. Hallelujah. The Bible declares there's a time for all things. And there's a time to be born. A time to die. A time to heal. A time to plant. A time to pluck up what's been planted. And God said he has made everything beautiful in its time. And I heard the prophet say today that God says your struggle is over. Hallelujah. Your drought is over. Your dry place is over. For the reign of the Spirit of God is going to do what he said. Hallelujah. Lift your voices and give him glory. Hallelujah for what he's done. Hallelujah. It's your season. It is your time. God has involved himself to hold back and to destroy the plan of the enemy. He planned your children. He planned your grandchildren. But God intervened. God steps in right on time. Hallelujah. God says, I said not so. He'll not take her. He'll not take him. God says, I have them appointed for myself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Will not be disappointed. No one that serves God, no one that put their trust in God will be put to shame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But he didn't stop there. He said, but the Lord, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to get glad in the spirit. Hallelujah. I heard old man David says, be glad in the Lord. Hallelujah. Shout the praise unto God. Hallelujah. Shout with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. God is our victor and God is our banner. Hallelujah. 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 Be glad in the Lord now. When you come into the house of God, don't come, don't come like you came. You got to come different now. If you believe what God has said, you've got to come differently now. You, you don't come walking with your head hung down. Square your shoulders. Walk straight and upright. Isn't that right? 
Hallelujah for the Bible says the upright shall dwell in the land and surely he shall be fed. And I heard the Lord tell me, he said, son, you shall eat of the good of the land. I said, Lord Jesus. I heard when he told Isaiah, he, Isaiah, he said, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. And I heard the Lord said, son, you're going to eat the good of the land. So I believe he must have counted me obedient. I believe he must have looked upon me and said I was faithful. Hallelujah. So I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Because God has spoken by his mighty power. Hallelujah. And I heard God says he watches over his word. He watches over his word, making sure that nothing stop it, making sure, hallelujah, that nothing can interfere with this powerful plan. So God sent his word and he healed them, hallelujah. Come on, somebody, give God the praise. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Your situation has just changed. Your situation has just changed. I want you to feel this. Your situation has just changed. Your situation has just changed. And for the word of the Lord has come. For the word of the Lord has come. For the word of the Lord has come. Your situation has just changed. Hallelujah. It's changed in the heavens. And so now you give him praise. And give him some glory. Rise up in the name of the Lord. And glorify the master. Give him the praise and the honor to his name. Shout with the voice of triumph. Great is the Lord. And great to be praised and sing to the Lord and be glad in the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously over his enemies thank you Lord don't you be surprised don't you be surprised if the Lord is pushing that to give you a miracle don't you even be surprised God is able he that has begun a good work in you shall perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. They were looking around and saying how bad things have gotten and how much the devil has been doing. Look at somebody say, it's time to change your confession. It's time to change your outlook. It's time to begin to see what God is doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is moving by his mighty spirit. God is at work by his spirit. Hallelujah. God, you and God are a majority. Hallelujah. And if God be for you, oh glory, who can be against you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I heard David said he is a rock, a shield, and a buckler. He's an exceeding great reward. Hallelujah. He said, I would have fainted if I had not waited to see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's your time. In these homes, the Spirit of God is going to go into these homes and He's going to work some wonders in the homes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. There's some people that are sick in their homes. The healing is coming, the chains are going to fall off right in their homes. Hallelujah. And they're going to come out and give God the glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We've already seen what Satan do. But we are yet to see what God can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I heard the Lord say, is anything too hard for God? Do, do, do you know who you serve? And he said, is anything too hard for God when I make a promise? I keep my word because I watch over it. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. And that word land right on time in the place with the people that he planned. 
Hallelujah. Cast off the frustration. Cast off the disappointment. Uh, and put on a new garment. Mm. Ah, glory, glory. <laughs> this garment is a garment of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When God has moved us from a certain state so that we can see what he said when he says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The name of the Lord is to be praised. You see, hallelujah. Right, right now, somebody's going to get in step with God. Hallelujah. And because you're in step with God, when you get up in the morning, your hand's going to lift up. When you get up in the morning, when your feet hit the floor, something's going to happen. Because now you're lining up with God. Well, God says from the time that the sun goes up until the time it goes down, he said his name is to be praised. So when you get in line with God, you're going to start praising God. The first thing you're going to say, hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because you're in line. Because you're coming in line with God. For the word of the Lord has gone out. And God has spoken. Healings shall take place. Deliverance shall take place. Hallelujah. And the oil of joy. As a matter of fact, even starting today, the oil of joy is going to be poured on some people here. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Don't you feel it? Don't you feel it? Something is taking place in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what he said. We'll not struggle now. We'll not struggle. But we'll bless him. You can, it'll, it'll mean something to you when David said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. He has triumphed gloriously over his enemies. Thank you, Lord. I'm grateful now. And we can lift our hands. He's going to set your feet a dancing. Glory, 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 glory. Some of you that just didn't know that you were even bold enough to dance. the wind of the spirit gonna breathe on you ah glory 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 Ooh, I thank you Lord this is your season this is the appointed time hallelujah Jesus glory to God hallelujah you know what I've discovered? No matter how long we struggle and what we struggle about and all the forces that seem to be, they try to act like they're so tough and so bad. When the lion rises up, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> you can't help but laughing at him. Because, you see, I thought, I thought, well, I thought they were, their voice was worse than anything else. They, they were big bullets, and I didn't, I didn't understand that. But God, the lion, will rise on your behalf. Mm, mm, mm. I, I, can, I can sense it now. The lion. Oh, glory. Glory to God. Sister on yesterday was talking about walking in the anointing. Walking in anointing, you can just sense him wanting to do certain things. And wherever it finds faith, if a word is delivered, wherever it finds faith in that heart, there's a igniting. Something takes place. It's explosive because of God. Is explosive. Who glory? Aya, glory to God. Alabosa. Ooh, yes. She got it. She 
Shigare. and I saw on his thigh the word 